Welcome everybody to our backup channel. Before we get going in this video, please take the time to hit that subscribe button so that way we will continue to stay connected with you in the event our main channel goes down. We love you. We want to stay connected with you. We want to continue to get these reports out in front of you and also all the other things that will come to this channel like our uptime, dreams and visions and everything. So if you enjoy all that, you need to hit that subscribe button right now because I do not like the censorship that I see coming down the road here. Basically, we are being proactive as much as we possibly can now. And if we are being proactive, you need to be proactive. Sound fair? Now, let's get into the second half of this video. Now, in the last video, I left off where Philip Barnett was implying that the rapture resurrection will not happen until there has been a nuclear exchange in the Middle East, possibly the destruction of Damascus and the Psalm 83 war. I disagree. And why do you ask? Well, he said the words, I believe. Now, I do believe, I do believe, I do believe there's a nuclear war coming to the Middle East before the rapture, the Psalm 83 war. Now, he's implying that this may happen before the rapture because he said the words, I believe that is not what God showed him directly. This does not line up with the dreams and visions that we have been chronicling here for the last 11 years. Why is it that the people in the Middle East need to get blown to kingdom come while the rest of us get to avoid it and go on the rapture before we get hit with nukes? Doesn't make any sense. It's not fair. Plus, there's common sense behind this as well. The first nuke will not drop until the red horse rider rides. And when does a red horse rider ride? When the second seal is open. He was given a great sword. A great sword means great destruction. Not stabbing one person at a time like we've been seeing since the beginning of time. It's mass destruction like a nuclear weapon. The Bible says he takes peace from the earth. You launch one nuke against a civilian population that will take peace from the earth because almost every country on the planet has nukes now. It's not like it was with Iwo Jima where America was the only country with nukes 80 years ago. Things have changed. Think about that for a second. Do you think this powder keg is now set for the red horse rider to come and light it? People have to realize the four horsemen don't come and create all the problems. They come and further facilitate a problem that already exists, and they exasperate it exponentially. Look, people think the four horsemen are riding now. They're not. The four horsemen's purpose is to exasperate an already existing problem within the confines of a seven-year period known as Daniel's 70th week. No 70th week, no horsemen. Yes, we see all the problems that these four horsemen will exasperate but we've already been seeing all these problems happening here on the earth because of the fall of adam the introduction of sin for example the red horse of war there have always been wars on the earth the black horse of the scales we've always had financial issues and high inflation here and there all throughout history it is what causes the fall of huge empires the green horse we've always seen pestilence and sicknesses all throughout history and the white horse the antichrist how many people have came and gone that walked in the shoes of the protocols of the antichrist jesus even told us in first john 4 3 that the spirit of antichrist is already in the world the problem already exists in the world but there's a day coming when this white horse rider rides and turn this dumpster fire that's been burning for thousands of years into a forest fire that burns for only seven years. All the problems are currently here. They just need to be exponentially accelerated. And the fact that we are now in this immensely unstable environment where almost every country in the world is armed with nuclear weapons, ready to use them in a moment's notice. Now, here's the thing you must understand. When these nukes go off, that means the red horse rider is riding. But when does the red horse rider ride? When Jesus begins opening the seals. And when does Jesus begin opening the seals? When we are standing before his throne. And how do we get to his throne? 
through the rapture resurrection event. We are standing before his throne, the body of Christ. We are standing before his throne before a single one of those seals is open. The body of Christ, his celestial governmental body, is started and completed within the confines of the age of grace and then once it's completed it's removed and put into its proper place in the heavens out of god's way while god then turns his focus on israel and those remaining on the earth because a new dispensation daniel's 70th week has begun a new gospel the time of testing it makes sense because according to Revelation 5 9 before the seals are even opened we are standing before his throne giving him praise and worship thanking him for redeeming us from the earth and also thanking Jesus for giving us our glorified bodies through the rapture resurrection in Revelation 5 9 it says and they that's us the body of Christ who have just been raptured to heaven and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof none of the seals have been opened yet according to this jesus will hear these words collectively all together from the completed body of christ before his throne that were delivered there through the rapture resurrection event it was a call of the assembly of the body of christ the full completed body of christ everybody with the glorified bodies fully redeemed from the earth from every kindred tongue and nation it wasn't just israel it was the entire planet all the gentiles with the messianic jews mixed in as well and according to the bible right here all this is completed before a single seal is opened without a doubt this is a pure pre-tribulation rapture verse that was a mic drop when those seals start opening, it begins the narration on the earth of the seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. And since Daniel's 70th week has not started yet, none of these seals have been opened yet. Just read the words. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. All future tense speech here. None of this has happened yet. The seals have not been opened yet. Are you looking at right now? is the setup for these seals to be executed when the four horsemen reach their fulfillment meaning when they actually ride two-thirds of the earth will perish we're talking billions of people are going to die in a very short period of time has that happened yet no in fact it's quite the opposite we are breaking records right now with the amount of people being born against the globalist wishes we actually just crossed over 8 billion and still going strong. So the seals have not been opened yet. Just read the Bible for what it is. Stop trying to spiritually twist it around and make a square fit into a triangle hole. Now, Philip's going to make a point about November 11th, 11-11, and how it pertains to his dream and the future nuclear war. The reason November 11th is because the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, and before they landed, they wrote out the Mayflower Compact, a covenant that the pilgrims would found a nation that would be a city on the hill, uh, like the old, like the nation of Israel. America would become a nation like Israel, a city set on the hill. And so that took place on November 11th, 1620, over 400 years ago. So November 11th, America has now broken the covenant. We allow, men, our Supreme Court allows men to marry men, women to wear, marry women. We've aborted well over 60 million of our babies. So the nuclear war will take place on November 11th. God showed him this vision of nuclear catastrophe on November 11th, 2011. That would be 11, 11, 11. One 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 one, and he also implies that the nuclear war will begin on November 11th of some designated year. And the way things are going, it's probably going to happen this year. Very interesting. You know that sheds a lot of light on this whole 1111 that I've been seeing all the time. I mean, it's really starting to ramp up. The frequency of this 1111 
has ramped up so much that it's just become comical to me almost. I see it so much now that I'm just saying to myself, oh, come on, give me a break. There has to be something to this. It happens so much now that every time I see it, I take pictures of it. And I'm not joking, it's happening to me every single day, twice a day, on the clocks, and then in other situations like this. I was reading an article dealing with the potential nuclear war for World War III. And right after I was done reading it, an ad popped up. And it showed a white, a red, and a black watch. And each watch had a time on it. And you know what time it was? 11-11. On all three watches. And don't forget the color of the watches. White, red, and black. Which was the color and the order of release of the first three horsemen of the apocalypse. Another really incredible example of this happened to me a few weeks ago when we were watching TV. Now, I wasn't watching this program very much. I would look up at it here and there. I was actually looking at my phone and going through some research for our next broadcast. But the one time that I looked up at it, they were showing this girl stealing something. And at the bottom of the monitor they had on the TV show, this is a number that I saw as soon as I looked up. One, 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 one. You cannot make this stuff up, folks. And what's interesting here, you are watching a thief stealing something. And how is Jesus coming to get us at the rapture resurrection? As a thief in the night. How about that? Many of you recall the dream that I had where I was raptured to heaven. I walked into this welcome area that looked like a lobby of a big hotel. There was a big front desk. I walked up to the receptionist and she handed me a card. But before she gave that card to me, she wrote down the number to my room. And it was numbered 8711111111111. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? Maybe you need to turn that card over so you can put more ones on the back. She kind of smirked at me, turned the card over, and continued going all across the card. One, 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 one. The number 11 has a lot of significance to me in my life. I was born on the 11th. Back in 2021, I was the first one to discover that the tribulation cycle would be the 11th cycle since Israel became a nation in 1948. The number 11, number of chaos, number of judgment, unrepentance, judgment for unrepentance. And here we are listening to Philip talk about how this nuclear war is going to go down. There will be safe zones in America. And so God has allowed the Democrats to do what they've done just the same as he allowed the Syrians and the people from northern Iraq to flee so that they won't be destroyed in the nuclear war. And he's allowed millions of Mexicans to flee here and South Americans so that they will not die. So the majority of the Mexicans are in Texas and Arizona, pretty much in New Mexico, right? Yeah. Those three states. And God, uh, well, Texas. they're everywhere. The school I teach is majority Mexican now. Really? Okay. Huh. Yeah, okay. they're everywhere. They're coming in by the millions. But why has this happened? Have our borders open? I think it's wrong. And I agree with that 100%. But, and this is going to be a huge but. Listen up. But God has allowed it because he sees what's going to happen. Everything, Pastor Paul, Brother Paul, is coming to a conclusion. Jesus is coming back. I tell you what. That right there, knowing the fact that our borders are wide open and all of Mexico, for the most part, is fleeing into the southern states of the United States. Why is that happening? You know, the Bible says in Romans 8.28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Think about this for a minute. How many believers are in all these droves of people coming into our country right now illegally from Mexico and all these other nations? And think about this. How many of these people are now hearing about the gospel of grace because it wasn't available to them where they were at in their home country? And now think about all those who would choose God later who will be left behind after the rapture who will end up choosing Jesus Christ loving him during 
the seven-year tribulation, who may survive the tribulation because they made it to these nuclear-free safe zones. You know, God sees all of this all at once. He knows who's going to love him, even though they don't love him now. These people fleeing into the southern states may be left behind, but they will end up loving God, choosing Jesus. So God is making a way for them right now to escape what's going to happen in Mexico and everything else south of Mexico. So with all that in mind, ask yourself this. All these people coming into America right now that we believe is actually a hindrance to America is actually a great thing to our Lord and Savior. Because these people, even though many of them will be left behind, they will choose the Lord during the tribulation. And if God chooses to allow them to survive, will these people make up the new America that will be a sheep nation during the millennial reign that will end up repopulating this country during that time. The globalists think that they're going to bring down this country by opening up our borders completely, but God is going to take their bad and turn it into a very good thing by reestablishing the rebirth of America, a sheep nation, with all these immigrants who become believers and somehow manage to survive by the grace of God till the end of the tribulation. And they will represent America and repopulate this country during the millennial reign. So just let that sink in. The fact that we are seeing this huge, uncontrollable migrant process of people pouring in to these safe zones that Philip Barnett pointed out in his visions should be a huge indicator of what he talked about will soon come to pass. And that means everybody that Trump is about to sound and we are about to leave the ground. Amen. Something very interesting to think about. What do you think? So everybody, please hit that like button. It helps us with the algorithm. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay connected with us. Remember, this is not our main channel you're watching right now. This is our backup channel. So please hit that subscribe button right now. In case our channel goes down, you will continue to stay up to date with all the latest content that we have coming out. And please share with your networks. We're almost finished, everybody. It's time to finish strong. And speaking of which, check out what you can do right now to finish strong in God's kingdom through supporting Christian missions through Feed My Sheep today. Folks, take a look around right now. We are in the days of Noah. Jesus said that his return will be during the times like the days of Noah. He was right on the money, but of course he is because he's God. And during the days of Noah and shortly afterwards was a first run of a global government, which was the Tower of Babel. And what are we seeing today? Globalism, globalism, globalism. So this means Jesus will return soon. And before that happens, the seven year tribulation will take place. And before that happens, the rapture resurrection will take place. And our work here on the earth is about to be completed. And all the work that you have done to help build the body of Christ will be complete and judged shortly after the rapture resurrection at the judgment seat of Christ. So the big question is, what did you do? And how much of it did you do? And how good was the work that you did? How many times were you involved in some way, shape, or form in helping bring a new person into the kingdom of God? Well, you're about to find out. The Bible says many will suffer loss, but you will still be saved through fire. So this is not a salvation issue, but rather an eternal reward issue. Look, CBDCs are coming. All of our money is going to disappear. And at the same time, so will we. This is why Jesus said, don't store up riches on earth, store it up in heaven. And a great way to store up riches in heaven is to share the gospel of grace, the hope and love of Jesus Christ with potential new believers. And that is what we do here at Feed My Sheep today. We are at the cutting edge of bringing new believers into the body of Christ. 100% of your funds go into the ministry work. We are purchasing Bibles. We are purchasing 
humanitarian relief aid and we are taking it to people who can potentially become new believers. We go to them, we help them, and then we preach to them and those who come to Jesus will receive a free Bible. No money wasted on big elaborate cathedral buildings and huge sound system and huge screens and huge parking lots. None of that. We are reaching the lost in hard to reach places in third world countries, in jungle areas, in areas outside of cities that people have completely written off and forgot about. These are the people that need to be reached and placed in the body of Christ before the rapture resurrection happens. Somebody has to get out there and do this work in these areas. You want the rapture resurrection to happen? Then help these missionaries get this job done. And you could definitely achieve this through Feed My Sheep today. All you need to do is go to our official website. It's www.feedmysheeptoday.org. There you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, or just simply send your gift in the mail. Super easy website to use, big buttons, only take you about a minute and you are done. And please consider becoming a monthly sustainer. This is great for those who can't afford to make a big impact right now. Instead, you could do it over a long period of time. This will help us out greatly because if we know how much money is coming in next month, this helps us to coordinate and plan and set up these locations that we will be visiting the next month knowing that we will have enough funds to purchase enough Bibles and humanitarian relief aid that will be sufficient for these areas that we are planning on going into. Please, just $10 a month, that can make a huge difference. And don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today, where you can see everything that we are spending the money on and all the new believers in Christ that came forth because of your financial support. Great in heaven will your rewards be. Thank you all so much for your support. May God bless you all.